In the next two videos, we're going to discuss tool parameters. Tool parameters is where we set up our tool library, we measure our tool lengths and diameters, and we set feed rates and RPMs and such. When we open the program, we see that there, the tools are broken down by type. We can expand the different types. And drills, for example, are broken down into the face of the panel that they, the, the tool is able to work on. So face one, is if you look at the icon, you can see in blue is highlighted. Face one is the top of the panel. Face three and five are the front and the back edges of the panel. And face four and six are the right and left edges of the panel. And that's important also to know in the uh, control editor when we're writing programs to understand the face numbers. But um, when we look at a drill, for example, that works on face one, if we expand that, then they're further broken down into blind drills, which are like brad point drills, through drills or v-point drills that are meant to go through the panel. Uh, drill with saw we typically refer to as a counter bore and then also countersink. So let's expand blind drills. And then we see that there's several drills already configured in the software. And uh, these come preloaded. And if you don't need a particular size drill, there's no reason to keep it. You can always delete it. Um, if you want to add another drill, you can just click Add and start adding its parameters. But typically, the simplest thing with drills is to uh, just take a, an existing drill and edit it. So, for example, if we needed a um, if we needed a, a, um, a different size drill, say 15 millimeter, we could just take this one that's already existing and then just edit its description. And with the description on any of the drills, it's just a text entry. Put whatever you want. Um, we can, uh, next step would be to define the, the, the length. And for all the, the tools, uh, drills, routers, anything, all of the parameters for lengths and diameters are in metric and millimeters. Uh, you can write programs in inches or metric, but the parameters must be in metric. So the drill length, uh, just as the picture shows, is measured from the underside of the drill shaft on the machine. Uh, down to the, the tip of the drill. Some people measure not to the tip, but in, but in between the tips and, and, dis, and um, ignore the, the tip length of the drill so that we get a more accurate hole depth. But in any event, measure from the underside of the shaft down to the tip of the tool. Um, then we put in our drill diameter. Uh, then we put in the minimum RPM, typically 1,000. The maximum is uh, 6,000 on most of the loose lotto boring heads. but um, and the default typically comes in as 6,000, and there's no reason to, to keep the default at 6,000. Because um, the way that default works is if you don't put any drill RPM in the program, then it's going to use the default. And that's the simplest way to, to create a program is just to leave the RPM blank. And for most of your common materials, uh, that's okay to do. But you want to make sure you make your default to be less than 6,000, 4,500. Uh, typically is, is, is fast enough. And for even larger diameter drills, say 20 or larger, you can slow the RPM down even further. So there's no reason to keep uh, the drill turning at maximum RPM all the time. It's better for it to, in the long run to, to keep it under 6,000 and 4,500 is typically fast enough. Uh, the work speed is just the penetration speed into the material. Uh, for say a 10 millimeter drill, three is probably okay, a little on the high side, but uh, for eight, eight millimeter and five millimeter drills, uh, three meters per minute is, is fine. Penetration and default exit speeds. This is an advanced feature that um, you can put a speed here and it controls how fast the material, I'm sorry, how fast the drill penetrates the top edge. And if it exits the bottom, how fast it exits the bottom. But you have to, not only do you have to put a feed right here, but in the program, you have to define where you want the tool to slow down and speed up inside the material. It's an advanced feature. We'll look at it in later videos when we talk about um, some of the advanced features in the control editor. But for now, I can just leave uh, whatever values here. Um, uh, one is fine. The dwell time is just the, the time, if you want the tool to dwell or pause at the bottom of the hole, you can put a value here. It's not very common to do this. Um, uh, if you find that the, the hole depths are not accurate, then it could be that you're drilling too fast and that the 
air pressure is, is being overcome by the force of the material on the drill pushing it back up into the head. So if that happens then you're likely drilling too fast and wouldn't recommend that you just use a dwell time to overcome that because you'll, um, you'll, you'll have the drill pause at the bottom of the hole and can um, stay and during that pause can build up heat quickly and can cause the, uh, the drill to, uh, to wear out more quickly. Uh, you can use it for certain materials, uh, but uh, for certainly if your hole depth is not accurate, check your, your work speed first. Uh, once, we've, once we have the, uh, the parameters for the drill established, um, another step that we need to take is to, uh, if we want to, we can change the image. It's not mandatory. But, um, for example, if we edited this drill to be a 15 millimeter drill, then we might want to edit this image where it says 10 millimeters. We could change that to be, um, uh, to be 15. So over here, uh, you can see the, the purple drill is the one that's selected. And whichever one you select turns purple. Anything in red is already used and is not available to use as an image. Uh, this 25 millimeter and this 14 millimeter, those are available images if we wanted to use those. But let's take this image here and let's edit it. We'll click on it, go to edit, and then we have two colors here. The left uh, square uh, corresponds to the left mouse button. The right square corresponds to the right mouse button. So right now, if I use, if I click and drag the um, the uh, the right, uh, if I click the right mouse button and drag, then I'll basically erase what's here in black because. Uh, since the right mouse button is now uses a white color, I can erase that. I could switch over to the paint bucket, and if I right click on, um, well, let's not do that because uh, I'll show you what will happen. It erased all the black, so let's undo that because all of that black was connected, so I filled that color in. If I went back to the pen, I colored in this black square to be white. Now I could go back to the paint bucket and erase this line at the bottom if I wanted. But if I just wanted to write the numbers uh, 15, and I just uh, <laughs> just filled that up by mistake, let's go back to the pen. But if I wanted to make the number 15, then it's just a matter of just basically clicking and dragging uh, with the mouse. So we can edit this image to show um, a 15 millimeter or a, just a fi a, the number 15 to represent 15 millimeters. So none of this is imperative, uh, but it's simply for your own use and however you want to identify your different tools. So once we save it, now we have a new image. Also note that at the bottom of the page, you can scroll down and under the unassigned category, any of these images are available to use. Um, there's many images for different types of tools and you can take any of these and edit them. So. In the next video, we're going to look at routing and how to set up router bits.